What's the word, y'all? The Minnesota Timberwolves are heading to the, the conference finals. Like, hello? This is my quick, quick reactions after game number one of the day being a complete blowout. This is what NBA fans needed because the entirety of this series, let's be real now, even though it went seven and it was a fun seven, it wasn't like we had a ton of close games. It was blowout here, blowout here. Oh, the other, now difference coming about. Blowout, blowout. I mean, last game was what, a 45 point blowout or something like that? And we finally got one of the ones that came down to the last minute and we desperately needed it. This was the biggest game seven comeback in NBA history. I think I heard them say on the broadcast, down by 20. To be down by 20, to the defending champions on the road and claw your way back into this game and eventually end up winning just shows you how good this Minnesota Timberwolves team really is. I have two Minnesota Timberwolves fans in my life, right? And I've seen them have so many highs and lows in their fandom. And, oh, man, I know they riding cloud, cloud now right now because um, I, I remember they traded for Jimmy Butler. Oh, we got Jimmy Butler. We're going to make the playoffs. And they did that. They got a playoff appearance. And then Jimmy Butler was yelling to C. Mason and requested a trade. They had a front office guy that they really like. And Gerson Rosas and Gerson Rosas, Rosas ended up having an, uh, a relationship with someone else in the organization. And he ends up getting fired. It's just, It was like every time something good happened in Minnesota Timberwolves fandom, something awful happened right after <laughs> And and now they're here. And they just beat the defending champions on their court three times in a seven game series. This was incredible. I mean, they did it without Anthony Edwards having his best offensive game until we got down to the last couple minutes. And then he hit a couple shots, got a couple steals. Everything was so great in this one. I want to quickly talk about the Denver Nuggets because a, a series like this, a game like this, just proves the fact that winning back-to-back -back championships or building a dynasty like Calvin Booth said is so very hard in today's basketball. They mentioned on the broadcast that no defending champion over the last four years had made it back to the conference finals the, the year after. Like that is an insane stat after there was a period of time in this in this league where like Shaq and Kobe got a bunch and then we got Dwayne Wade and LeBron got a few. Then Steph Curry and Kevin Durant got a few. Like it, we've seen teams be dominant for a long stretch of time and now recently over the new parity league, which I absolutely love, the team that most people looked at, the Denver Nuggets, say, yeah, this is their championship. This is their Western Conference at the bare minimum. It's so hard to do it back-to-back. -back. And the Spurs, who were able, in my opinion, this is my opinion, to build a dynasty with Tim, Manu, and Tony Parker, they never won back-to-back. -back. So I'm not saying the, the window or the door is not closed for the Denver Nuggets. I'm not saying that at all because they still have the best player in the world and some good pieces around them. But it just shows you that you can never get too complacent because after they let Bruce Brown move in free agency, now there was nothing they could really do about it. They weren't giving Bruce Brown $20 million a year. Calvin Booth was talking to Kevin O'Connor and he said that, hey, uh, Peyton Watson is everything that Bruce Brown is and more. And guess what Peyton Watson did over the last couple games of this series? Did not, I'm not going to curse, did not see the floor. So, back to the lab, Calvin. You don't want to kill the core because the core is still good, but you, you may not want to be poppy at college just a little bit too much after the first championship. I mean, nobody can take that championship away. Um, but boy, this was something, man. Because I, I think that if you're a Denver Nuggets fan, if there's anything to turn to at, for this game, the, the moment that I was, I was thinking about after it all wrapped up was... Jokic's not getting that normal rest that he gets in the third quarter. And granted, I understand it, right? This is a game seven. If we don't win this game, then then the season is over. Guess what? You didn't rest Jokic, and he just looks sluggish and just not the best version of himself come fourth quarter. And I say that knowing the fact that early in the fourth quarter, he scored 14 of the 17 points or between the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth quarter. Like, he was attempting more threes than he ever should. And he still was the only person really doing anything. Um, he attempted 10 threes. And I don't know if you, were you remember after game number one, I mentioned that the nine three-pointers that he attempted in game number one was the most amount of three-pointers he had attempted the entire season. And now it was up to 10. And, and the two that he hit was like a... Because he was just so tired. They were beating him up. I thought Car Anthony Townsend and the help defense of Rudy Gobert slash Nas Reed made it just so tough for him. Even though, again, the stat line does say 34, 19, and 7. They made it extremely tough for him. And for him not to have that break and for him not to have any teammates that he could trust down the stretch, this was a tough, tough game. Jamal Murray was phenomenal to start this game off. He was dominant. And then what happened in that second half? Anthony Edwards got that call. And absolutely put the clamps on. Right, again, you're going to remember, you look at the stat line, you say Anthony Edwards, 16, 8, and 7, 25% from the field. Ugh, yucky game seven. Bro, Jamal Murray couldn't do anything the entire second half. And that was all, not all, not all, because the, the team defense is real. But a lot of that was Anthony Edwards saying, hey, 
I got us right now. I started off this game one of eight. I'm not contributing the way I need to. And he said in his post-game interview that he's not a one-dimensional player. And that's facts. Like, he really stepped up and said, this is your best offensive player right now. That is who I'm guarding. And he was great at it. Michael Porter Jr., this was this was not a Michael Porter Jr. Se- series. Oh, let me, let me see exactly what the numbers are. And, I, you know, I, I shouldn't, shouldn't be doing this. This is quick reactions, but, hell, we here, right? Michael Porter Jr., over the last couple games, he had seven points, eight points, six points. Yikes! For a guy that, that is as, cru- he's very crucial to the team's success. Seven points, eight points, six points, four points. He hasn't scored double digits since, what's that, game number three? That's, that's. That's hard to win a basketball game because you rely on Michael Porter Jr. shooting. Aaron Gordon, four points, four rebounds, two assists is the final stat line. Just not an impactful player. And again, part of that we give, um, a a good majority that I give to the Minnesota Timberwolves defensive plans. Completely eliminating him on the short roll, completely eliminating him in the dunker spot, just neutralizing Aaron Gordon. If you remember early, early in the season, I was, oh, this might have been on the podcast. I was asked, what is something that's not being talked about that might be, come come back to bite them later in the season? And one thing I mentioned, and I guess it didn't matter too, too much in this one, I mentioned the shooting regression from Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon can't shoot and teams are guarding him. And if he's not playing the great two-man game between him and Jokic, offensively, he doesn't have his superpowers. And I thought the Minnesota Timberwolves did an amazing job of neutralizing him after one of those games. He was perfect from the field. And then the game after that, he was pretty damn good. But since then, it had been wraps. Carl Anthony Towns deserves a lot of love in this one, man. Let's go back to the Minnesota Timberwolves because let's talk about them because they don't want that one in the series. Carl Anthony Towns deserves so much love because, again, guarding Jokic is not an easy thing. I thought in this series at whole, he did so very good when it was him in space. Now, whenever it was Carl Anthony Towns as the primary defender, they always sent two. The only time they went single coverage was when it was Rudy Gobert and, and Nicole Jokic. You didn't really see single coverage from Carl Anthony Towns and Yoke, but still, he held his own. And when Carl, and when uh, Anthony Edwards was struggling to shoot the ball, Carl Anthony Towns was the guy to say, hey, I'm an offensive weapon. I can do this. And other than two of his fouls being bonehead fouls, I thought he played a phenomenal game. Jaden McDaniels. I mean, the offense from Jaden McDaniels this series had been, of course, up and down. But I want to see. He had a couple games in this series, right? He had um, he had last game. Right, last game when they won by a million points. 21 points in that one. And in this one, he ended up with 23. And again, phenomenal defense. He had the one block on Jokic. Right? Well, I didn't even know if he got credited for that one because it was three blue jerseys around there. But so many great defensive plays. And Uncle Mike hit a big three down the stretch, which is dope. I thought Rudy Gobert completely completely changed some of the game when it came to the third quarter fourth quarter because Jokic's not getting that rest I mean they it just allowed Rudy Gobert to kill that offensive glass in this game they ended up having a total of 11 offensive rebounds I could tell you that at least four of those came in that last fourth quarter when they were on that big run because there were some times where Jokic was so tired that a he wasn't trying to box out and b he wasn't jumping for rebounds and Rudy Gobert just scooped in and got the board he had the craziest shot maybe of his whole NBA career where it's one second on the shot clock he suits a turnaround jump shot from what 15 feet away and it goes in at that moment in time I should I should put a parlay in or uh, uh, took the money line because I should have known the basketball gods was in the favor of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And here they are hosting, hosting a, a Western Conference Finals. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back and watch some of the games between them and Dallas. I would say right now they have the upper hand, if you ask me. Again, I have to go back and see how they matched up against them. But the defense is just so dominant. And the two big man lineup, I think, would have some relative success, relatively good success over Dallas. Again, I got to go back to look at it. But this team is four wins away from being in the NBA Finals. That is insane. We're going to be crowning a new champion this year, whether it's Indiana or Boston or Minnesota or Dallas. I feel like there's so many more things I can say about the series, but I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. I think we're just going to end it there. The putback dunk from Carl Anthony Towns when um, it, it felt like the the, Dallas, the Denver Nuggets were going on this little run. They got another stop, and Carl Anthony Towns comes soaring in for the dunk. That was the, the icing on the cake. I think it was 40 seconds left in the game um, on that one. Um, yeah, there are so many moments. There are so many, so many moments. 
And I have been wavering with this Timberwolves team all season long. Before the season started, I made a video talking about how I was buying all the stock that everybody was getting rid of. Um, but Lord knows, I didn't think they were going to make the conference finals. I thought they were going to be pretty good. But conference finals is not something I saw in their their um, their future. And then even when the playoffs started, um, I, I've been wishy-washy on them. You know, I just really had a hard time trying to internalize what the offense would look like in close games. And again, in this series, they only had one close game, and it was today, and they won it. So they've just been doing their thing, defying the odds. And Timberwolves fans, you should be super excited. But guess what? You got a basketball game about 48 hours. Best of luck. I cannot wait to see it.